love to run in the freedom of wide open spaces. But not all dogs can run, and some have a hard time even walking. Fortunately, one family has been in the business of making innovative custom wheelchairs for animals since 1999. Eddie's Wheels is a nexus of new beginnings, owned by Ed and Leslie Grinnell and their daughter, Chris. These are the caring hands that make mobility a reality again for disabled dogs and other animals. So now you've seen the video, and you know what we do, and you might wonder what I've learned from the dogs. And that might be summed up as follows. We are here to care for each other, emotionally and physically. And that's all there is to know. The dogs who have chosen to become our companions know this. They offer us unconditional love, and we love them back. Blank. <laughs> yeah, we love them back. So, I can't remember my next line. We love them back. I was afraid of this. We know the tales of dogged devotion. Lassie, Rin Tin Tin, Hachi. But I have tales to tell you of humans whose devotion to a particular dog turns them into the caregiver. Willing to be their legs, to carry them from place to place, up and down stairs, in and out to potty. I've been doing this for 28 years, and I can tell you that this is backbreaking work. That's where the canine wheelchair comes in. Like magic, freeing both caregiver and the dog with freedom and mobility. The wheelchair supports the dog in a healthy, normal stance, allowing the body to reveal its potential for movement. All we have to do is watch as legs are activated by reflexes to move once again. With the consistency provided by the cart and the opportunity for strength building through regular exercise, a decent percentage of our clients will be walking dogs again. I cared for Buddha 28 years ago when she woke up paralyzed. She was my husband's first wife. On our first date, she sat on my lap and let me know what my position was in the pecking order. So when she woke up paralyzed, I became her caregiver. It was more like caring for an aging parent than caring for a child. There was the grief that came from the loss of mobility and independence. There was the shame of the potty accident. There was the anxiety of having to rely on me to carry the 40 pounds of her back end up and down the stairs to get her in and out to go to the bathroom. All of this changed when the wheelchair came into play. Supporting her in the wheelchair allowed us to go back into the woods again, and we did, every day, two or three times a day. And my role became how to, carry, how to lift her wheelchair over the rocks, over the trees, and pull her out of the mud when she went frog hunting. Over time, three months actually, she went from being deep pain negative and dragging her feet to walking in her wheelchair. And three months later, she had enough strength in those legs to stand up and walk without the wheelchair unaided. She lived another three and a half years and died at 13 and a half as a fully mobile dog. I often tell my clients, that all we do is support healing while the body takes whatever time it needs to heal. But it's not just physical healing that matters. It's not just physical support. We exist in a synergistic, energetic relationship with our dogs. They look to us for approval and encouragement the first time we put them in a cart. And they live in their abilities, not their disabilities, taking joy in the present of each moment and accepting themselves the way they are, despite whatever brokenness or decrepitude a human might see in them. This is particularly poignant for my clients who have canine ALS. A degenerative disease that starts with toenails dragging 
and ends weeks, months, or years later in total quadriplegia. Baxter was a Sato dog who spent the last six months of his life in a quad cart. Come on, Baxter. This is the day he picked up his wheelchair, and he wasn't all that pleased about it. But his caregiver told me that those last six months were the best six months of his life. That wheelchair was a passport into a world that other dogs never got to go to. He took a championship turn around the Rangers hockey rink, and he got to stroll through Tiffany's. His team of caregivers would take him on lovely walks and made sure that he got to the beach regularly. The last time I saw Baxter was at a pet expo in Boston. His cart was by then totally blinged out with hot wheels, hot hot rod wheels, and he was wearing his super dog cape. And children came over to him and leaned into his face, and he would lick their faces, and I was just so moved at their, his ability to let everyone know he was still here, still engaged, and still alive. But I'd like you to meet the happiest part of my business, the front wheel cart division. This is Webster. Come here, Webby. Webby and his sister were born with no front legs as a result of inbreeding. He came to live with us eight years ago. And you can see that Webster, left to his own devices, can't go very far. His life, in fact, was limited to wherever there was padding because he can't take more than a few steps without flopping on his chest. But look what happens when we put him in a wheelchair. Come on, buddy. Want to get in your cart? Come on. Oh, come on, buddy. Get in your cart. Do you need, a you need a treat? Okay, you need to be paid. Come on. Get in your cart. He's a very shy boy. Good job. So the cart takes the place of his front legs. I can't believe you're too nervous to eat. OK, come on. Get yourself in. There you go. Good job. Good job. He got this cart when he was six months old, having never taken a step like a normal standing dog. Come on. What? Good boy. It only took him a few hours to learn how to steer. If you follow the treat, you can learn how to steer with your rear legs, can't you? Come on. Come on. There you go. Good boy. Sit. He had never sat up before. Webster. You want to catch? Maybe? Good boy. We call him shortstop. This proves that our body has instinctively that hard wiring that tells us what normal movement is. This is what I learn over and over again from these dogs. No matter how broken they are, they find their abilities and they use them. So Webster, who is known in, the, in a subspecies of dogs born with no front legs and who are very often called Roo, because they have amazing abilities for leaping, has turned in to a true dog, not a rude dog. Up, oh, go get it. Ready? Another one? Yep. Stage fright. Come here. Come over and show how you do it. Show them how you sniff. Come here. Pick it up. This is not possible for a pug. There are some things we cannot compensate for, lack of neck and lack of nose <laughs> being one of them. So, what is it that we've learned? What body of knowledge do dogs have to share with us? They know love and support, and that's all we need to know. Thank you. <laughs>